All right, we are here with Anya from Project Runway, and we have a few questions for you. Uh, thank you so much for sitting down with DivasAndDorks.com. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, um, just kind of getting right into it, just your history in designing. Like, let me know um, what really started you into designing. Like, what moment did you say, I want to be a designer? Yeah, that's a really good question because I um, really thought that I was going to do that. My father's a doctor. It was much more acceptable, you know. Um, but when I was about 15, I went with my parents to Tokyo. And I really understood at that point that design was a thing. Like, it was something that you could, it was a discipline. Mm -hmm. And I, I just fell in love with how beautiful every single thing was. You know, every, every wrapper, every, every package, every piece of packaging, everything was designed. And so then I decided to, to study design. And I thought that I was going to do fashion. When I studied fashion design, it said, I kind of chickened out the fashion stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I was overwhelmed by the bigness of the fashion world. And, and then I, a few years later, fell right back into fashion, and so here I am. Really? Wow. Now let me know. Let me know about like growing up. Were you very fashionable growing up, or did you ever go through that awkward stage? Or I mean, I have pictures of me that I. I <laughs> <laughs> I was never afraid of experimenting, okay. and I'm still not. I mean, like my hair, for instance, like, I think it's really important to just, just try stuff out, and then you find your voice, you know? Um, but I, I was. I was very into fashion from day one. I loved watching Sal and Elsa Clench on CNN. Uh -huh. I was a little girl living in Trinidad. There was not much access to magazines or TV, like, so that was the only fashion show on TV, you know? I loved it. Like, I, got, I got to see every collection that showed everywhere in the world. And I loved magazines, I loved cutting up my clothes and turning them inside out, and I, I was super into that. A little bit of a, I just never thought of it as how do I translate that into a career? You know? I still went in very academic routes. I still studied medicine. I still thought that was what I was supposed to do. Okay. Until, you know, luckily I have parents who supported my dreams and they really saw in me something much more creative than, um, than what I initially thought I was going to do. So they fully supported me. I went to Carson. I went to Central St. Martin. And they really were always encouraging. Now, growing up, what moment did you think, okay, this is really too hard as far as coming up with designs? And I know you said you first did graphic design and then you end up back in fashion. But at what moment, like, can you take me back to that moment where you said, I don't think I could do this? And how did you overcome that? Yeah, I mean, in the first year of the Parsons program, you get to try out three of the divisions. And I did fashion graphic design and product design. When I did the fashion segment, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, there are too many talented people in this department. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able to compete with that, you know? And I just, I literally check it out. You yeah. know? And I was good at graphic design. It seemed much more like, it seemed like a viable career option okay. coming back to the Caribbean and so on. But really, those are all excuses. <laughs> For the real fact that I was nervous to yeah. compete in a big world with a lot of competitive people. And you know, it's, it's a very challenging new industry. Yeah. So that was when I checked it out. And then I went to Miss Ingress and Miss Trinidad and Tobago, and I got to design some of my wardrobe. And that's when I realized this is a lot simpler than it seems. You know, like you get to just design a piece of clothing and you make it and then you sell it. It's like one, two, three. You know? <laughs> I mean, of course, on a bigger scale, it's much more complicated, but really, I, I thought, you know, I've always wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I just did it yeah. at that point. Good, good. <laughs> now, can you share a little bit more about your Miss Universe experience? Absolutely. Um, anything in particular you want to know? No, I mean, how did you get into it? You know, what made you say, this is what I wanted to do? And, you know, and also, how did that affect you, like, into your designs today, into your career today? Um, okay, well, I really never considered doing a beauty pageant. Um, even now, in retrospect, I still consider it a really strange move for me. Um, and I still, I still have issues with what it means about women and, and the image that it portrays. But at the time, my brother had just died, and he was very young, and I was very like confused to put it you know, 
myself as straightforwardly. Like I just didn't know what I was doing. Mm-hmm. But I did know that I couldn't go back to doing graphic design because I just didn't feel really passionate about it. Um, and so becoming a student it was kind of my way of like trying something else. And it kind of came to me and I figured, you know, why not? Why not? Yeah. Um, and then it turned out to be really very beneficial because when I was a student I could then launch my line with a lot more of a name, you know. And, and so it really worked out for me in the end. And in the end, I think that it did help me have a voice and it did help me discover who I am. And as archaic of a, an institution that BG Cadrons is, it still it has a role, you know. And it gave me an opportunity to figure out how to be me. And it really did. Now, speaking of you, you have incredible style. You have to let me know. Like, how would you describe your style? Um, well, it evolves. Uh-huh. But I think that right now, it's sort of, I, I really like when I hit this balance of like a little bit punk, a little bit rocker, and still soft and feminine. You know, I love print. I love, love print. I love color. Um, my graphic designer side just loves patterns. And so that just falls into place, you know, but it always it kind of shifts. And right now, because of my hair, I've really kind of decided to go this like rocker, but still tribal. It's a real strange kind of. But you wear it well. You wear it absolutely well. I love it. I love it. Let us know about um, getting into the Project One Way. How did that whole experience happen, and, and how did you change from it? Oh well, um, my life has changed dramatically in yeah. the last few months. But I got into it by seeing a tweet, um, and I saw that the application was due for this season, and I just thought, well, why not? You know? Kind of like the universe. Like, you don't know until you try. Mm-hmm. And um, so I sent in my application, not expecting anything, and they called me the next day. And I, I, in my true last minute nature, I sent in the application at the last minute, uh-huh. the last day. Um, and then I was so shocked that they called me, but I went to the first audition, I went to the second audition. Each time I got called back, I was more and more surprised. And then um, and the rest is history. Wow, that is amazing. <laughs> And it all happened because of a tweet. All because of a tweet. Yeah. What if I had to see that tweet? Exactly. Everything happens for a reason. Every second, every millisecond happens for a reason. That's great. So let us know about what you're doing with HP. How's this partnership going? It's wonderful. I'm here at CES with HP and Intel. Um, we've done what are called spotlights. So they are live interviews for the audience. And we do a giveaway and talk about the technology and how the technology is really it's about fashion and technology, which you know everything about. It. And it's just how the technology has influenced my creative process, how it influences me as a small business owner. Um, everything that how technology merges with fashion. Okay. And that's been really, um, it's been a dynamic conversation. And I didn't really think about it because they don't think about it. Technology it's sort of it's just works, it's just there. Mm-hmm. But thinking about it more and being here to see and seeing the innovation, it really has me like it has my the wheels turning. How do I hope to even more? Mm-hmm. They really are some great ways to merge the two. I think you see that more even with other designers like Mark Jacobs and like uh, 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 Rebecca Minoff. And uh, there's so many different designers that actually embrace technology and use it to their advantage. Yeah. Are you on uh, Facebook or uh, Foursquare, all that other stuff? Like, what's your favorite social media platform? I have to say, Facebook and Twitter are rivals. You know, they've both been so great for me. Um, sharing with my fans, interacting with my fans, building a fan base. Uh, I don't know where I would be without it. Um, I love that it's so, the interaction is so intimate. Like, they can really get to know the people who follow me and who I then understand. Like, what are their needs, what do they want? It, makes, it closes the gap. It's a really great area. Um, when the show was airing, I would tweet through all the episodes. That made it so much more enjoyable for me. Um, so 
Facebook. Yeah, I mean, I think for different reasons, I really like both Facebook and Twitter. And give us a typical day on how you use technology. Like, do you wake up and you're checking your Facebook, checking your Twitter? Is it? My phone is like, I wake up and one eye is open and I'm already like, <laughs> I have to train myself to like, wait. Yeah. Um, very much my day begins with my emails and my Twitter and my Facebook. And um, I'm very conscious to be active all day. You know? Unless, of course, I'm just really consumed with work and it's a balance. You know, making sure that I get my work done and right, I'm just. Right. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it just penetrates everything. Now, are you team iPhone, team Blackberry? What's your, your um, cellular of choice? I'm a, I'm a heavy Blackberry user. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I think at some point I'll probably be on both. BBM is a big part of my game. Yeah. If that's all for it. But it's great for me because I keep in touch with my brothers, my best friends, no matter where in the world I am. Um, but an iPhone, I think, is great as well for just very efficient handling of video and images. And that, that's a big part of what I do. Yeah. If someone might send me a piece of fabric, what do you think of that? And if I can't see it right away, it's a problem. Right. You know? right. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, we call that bicellular. <laughs> it's like I'm bicellular. Don't judge me. You know, it's a lifestyle. <laughs> I love that. So yeah, well, yeah. You know. So okay, last question. What would you like to share with your fans and, and also other designers that are that look up to you and want to take their career to that next step? I, I always have this one sort of mantra that I tell myself to a lot. Um, it's risk being yourself fully. And that applies, I think, to everything. How you dress, um, the choices you make, the terms of your career. It's proven to me time and time again when I just go for it. Don't think about how it's going to work out. Don't think about what might happen, what people might say. It's one of those questions that come into my mind. But I rely on the memories of the times in my life when I've just done it. And it always works out. And I know I have good instincts that each and every one of us have good instincts. When you just listen, cut out all the noise. It's easy to say, but I love it. When you lock into that, it just goes. And the universe responds, and amazing things happen in ways you can never imagine. I think there's a quote that says, it's better to be the perfect you than try to be a faulty anyone else, or something like that. Yeah. And that's exactly it. Right, right, right. Don't die a copy. <laughs> Don't die a copy. All right. Well, thank you so much for this interview.